Oh, okay, so people are still getting on my case about the yellow-white deck thing. So we're going to go ahead and move away from competitive decks for a little while. And just let that whole thing blow over. What you're about to watch is a deck profile I made that is kind of a variation of my Pinky Sparkle Surprise deck. The main change comes from the fact that we're going to switch out the new Twilight with the new Pinkie Pie. Pinkie Pie allows you to sacrifice one of your friends to get rid of one of your opponent's friends. Wait, 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 that was a little dark. Uh, Pinkie Pie lets you send one of your friends to the discard pile to also send one of your opponent's friends to the discard pile. Nailed it. This version of the deck isn't anywhere near as competitive, but you can still do some pretty fun things with it. Our main power will come from the fact that we can get rid of critters in order to get rid of really big things on the field. Critters are normally very cheap and also very mobile this metagame, so it's the perfect conjunction with Pinkie Pie. So without further ado, let's take a look at the deck list. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Cute Things Exploding. Please kids, don't try this at home. For those of you that are here to net deck the deck list, then here it is, please enjoy. All I ask is that you leave me a like on your way out. For the rest of us, let's take a closer look. This is another deck that I'm running three Pinky Responsibility Pies in, mainly because in this deck you can pay the four to play it to a problem, get rid of a friend, then confront the problem and get rid of it again for the other Pinkie Pie and get rid of another friend. So what I'm trying to say is you're paying four to dismiss two friends. As long as the total cost of both friends that you dismissed equaled four or more, you're getting your points back. The fact that it has very low power is one of the reasons that nobody really wants to run it at more than two, but in this case, we can run it at three because its power doesn't matter. It's going to explode as soon as it hits the field. We're also running three Globetrotter because in my personal opinion, he's probably one of the best pink cards out right now. He only has one pink color requirement, so we can play him just like a vanilla as long as Pinkie Pie is our main character. He gives this deck some pumped so it can keep up with other pumped decks, and this pumped ability gives you full hands all of the time. The main problem with cute things exploding is not having enough things to make explode, but with this card, we can continually draw cards, draw into our critters, and make sure we have a full field of nice, fluffy time bombs. <clears throat> What I'm trying to say is we like having lots of cards in our hand for Pinkie Pie's effect. Too Big Top, because, I don't know, I just like Big Top. Big Top puts a lot of pressure on your opponent to win face-offs, because if they don't win face-offs, then some bad things are going to happen. Big Top can pressure Eagle, Octavia, all kinds of things. We're only playing two here, because we don't really want a field of more than one. We're more trying to play really cheap friends, and four is a little bit too expensive. We don't really want to make him explode, so why would we want to put him in our deck at more than two? Two Cheese Sandwich, to counter a lot of meta decks, gets rid of all team organizers, gets rid of cloud chasers, gets rid of a lot of things. And the fact that it goes back to your hand is absolutely astounding. You can use it to get rid of something that's causing you a lot of trouble, and then immediately play it again and either get rid of something else or make it explode. Your choice. Finally, to round out pink, we have one DJ Pawn E. Ah, uh, the thing about DJ Pawn E is she's never really necessary, but always a pretty good tech. If your opponent's getting just a little bit too many cards in their hand, you can always get rid of DJ Pawnee to make sure that they don't have as much of a hand to work with. Or if they have a really good hand, then you can just make them get rid of that good hand and draw into a completely new one. She's just really versatile, so I'd always run her at least one of in every pink deck. For yellow, we're running three House Mouse. A lot of you are going to disagree with this, but there are a couple of reasons that I don't mind running House Mouse. One, it's a free yellow card. You can play it, and then you're automatically up by one in all of your yellow requirements. Two, it's a one-cost card that you can get rid of for your Pinkie Pie's effect. Also, playing one-cost cards makes it easier to flip Pinkie Pie, which you need to do. Three, the fact that it has one power isn't that big of a deal because we have the random effect now. If we happen to flip this for a face-off, we're going to get rid of it anyway, so it doesn't even matter. If you just don't see this as a good card, then I would recommend taking it out for Cloud Chaser. Cloud Chaser is definitely a viable option over House Mouse. It just comes down to personal preference. Owl is in the exact same boat, but a lot more powerful. We can play it really early to flip Pinkie Pie. It only costs one, so we can get rid of it for Pinkie Pie's effect and not feel too bad about it. If we don't want to get rid of it, it gives us a lot of power. It's just a very versatile card in this kind of deck. This is also an acceptable card to take out if you want to run something a little more powerful. An element of kindness or two definitely wouldn't hurt. Blue Jay fixes color requirements, pays for itself in power, and we also like the fact that we can play it early, flip 
Pinky, make it explode. Fun times. We don't really want to make Eagle explode. Eagle is a really good card. The one problem we're going to have is Eagle can kind of fight for pumped when it comes to Globetrotter. You can only give the card to one of them. I would recommend giving one of them to Eagle, and then if you happen to get any more and Eagle already has one, then give the rest to Globetrotter so you can keep drawing those cards. If you absolutely need to, you can use Eagle's effect to move him to a problem and then confront it and then make him explode to get rid of something and it's free, but he's such a good card, why would you do that? If you had to, the option's there, but I wouldn't recommend doing it. Sea Swirl is such an amazing card for this deck. It's so good. You can play it as soon as you get one house mouse on the field, and as soon as you put it to a problem, you can exhaust it and then move up to three critter friends to that problem. I also like to call this refilling my ammunition. The one problem with running cards like House Mouse, Blue Jay, and the Owl is you don't really want to pay to move them onto a problem just to make them explode. With Sea Swirl, you can pay the two to move Sea Swirl, and then all of a sudden three of your critters come up, and now you have all of the ammunition you could possibly need. She pretty much makes it so that our deck isn't as expensive as it would be normally. Even though this is a very important card to our strategy, we're only going to run it at two, because if we ever get a second one in our hand when we already have one in play, it's going to be a dead card. On to the events. Vision of the future, because we like winning face-offs. Downright dangerous, because truly outrageous rarity is a card. So our all-team organizer, cloud chaser, owl, and a whole bunch of other things that you really don't want cluttering up your opponent's field. Let's get this party started. Fixes our hands. This would be quite the awful deck if we didn't have any critters to sacrifice. I mean, to get rid of for Pinkie Pie's effect. So we want to draw a lot of critters. <clears throat> So, uh, so yeah, draw a lot of critters and play them for Pinkie Pie's effect. We play Yay because it's free and we want to control our opponent's problem. And we run Critter Cavalry because it's awesome. Fun fact, we can actually play this card as a combo with Vision of the Future to give us an automatic 10 during face-offs. Chicken Costume is a very underrated card that I love to run in my pink decks, and it's the only resource really worth running in this kind of deck. Getting this early on a Cloud Chaser, an All-Team Organizer, or a Rarity Truly Outrageous is just good times, because it makes the card essentially worthless. You can also run it on things like bulk biceps if you don't want bulk biceps moving. The coolest thing about this resource is normally resources have a really low power, but if we happen to flip this during a face-off, we're still getting 5 power. That's vision of the future good. And of course, the only troublemaker we're going to run is Yellow Parasprite. We could actually technically take Yellow Parasprite out completely and run something like Manticore, because we want to encourage our opponent to play lots of friends onto their problems. That way we have lots of target for our critter bombs. I still feel like Yellow Parasprite is the best choice, though. I still think it's the best troublemaker in the game. It's also very easy to get a hold of. And on to our problem deck. A Thorn on his paw is kind of a tech problem. We're mainly running it because we can get three yellow friends out very quickly, and it slows our opponent down. We would never run this as our starting problem, but when we do flip it, we can work around it, and it is very good. Adventures in Full Sitting is the card we'll normally be using as our starting problem, because it's very easy to solve, and it has a pretty good effect. When we confront it, we can look at the top card of the problem deck and put it either on top or bottom, and it lets us control exactly what we're going to play. See, if we look at the top card of our problem deck and see that it's something like, say, a thorn in his paw, then we know that we need to get three yellow critters into play so that we can use its effect. Mean Meanie Pants lets each player draw a card when it comes into play, and it's pretty easy for us to solve. That gives us one more card we can use as a bomb. May the Best Pet Win is one card that I use in just about every yellow deck, because if your opponent isn't running yellow, it's a free card for you, and really nothing for your opponent. Frown Town is the best problem we could ever hope for for a deck like this. Every time we confront it, we can look at the top card of our deck, and if it happens to be a friend, we can put it in our hands. It pretty much goes like this. We confront this card, and we get rid of one of our critters, to get rid of one of our opponent's friends. Then look at the top card of our deck, and if it's another critter, put it in our hand, so that we can have another critter to play next turn, and do it all again. It's pretty good. And that's about it for the deck. Save your pinky effects for things that actually matter. 
don't get rid of things like two power, no effects. Vanillas really aren't worth it unless they're very powerful vanillas. If you see that your opponent is playing white, then try to save one of your exhaust killing cards like Cheese Sandwich for when you see Rarity Truly Outrageous hit the field. This also goes for purple if you see your opponent drop an all team organizer. And don't feel silly about getting rid of Cloud Chasers. Cloud Chasers build up a lot of extra action points over time, so the earlier you get rid of them, the better it is for you. If House Mouse won't actually do anything for you, don't play it. It becomes a burden. Play it when you know that you can get rid of it with Pinky's Effect to actually get rid of something, or you need it to solve some of your color requirements. Big Top is a little expensive for this deck, so that's why we're only running it at 2. If you happen to get one in your hand, try to save it for when you know you can make a face-off happen. If you play it early, you might get yourself into a situation where you don't have enough action points to play some of your critters. And the critters are what really matter. Thanks for watching my deck profile. Hopefully you guys aren't quite as hard on this deck as you were the yellow and white one, because this deck is a little less serious. It's more of a trolley deck. If you did enjoy the video, then it would really help me out if you left me a like. Those things are awesome, and I like seeing that blue bar. If you have any thoughts on the deck, or if you have any changes that you would make to the deck if you were going to play it, then please leave it in the comments section below. And finally, if you found this video an accident, then subscribe to stay up to date on the latest Kudo news. See you next time, MLP fans!